Hello again. Uh, today we're going to talk about uh, if you don't have art supplies at home, what can you use? Uh, part of being artists is being creative and thinking outside the box. And so we're going to do that with our supplies because not everybody has everything. So I'm going to go through what to do if you don't have paper, if you don't have uh, pencils like for drawing, if you don't have glue, if you don't have brushes, or if you wanted to paint, if you don't have paint. So there's going to be little sections on each of those that you can skip to. Okay, so if you don't have paper, here are some options that you can find at home. Um, most of you guys are getting mail still. Um, so either using the outside of these and gluing them together or doing smaller pieces that would be featured next to each other. Um, or you can use, let me do this one hand, it is not easy. Sometimes they have really cool patterns on the inside, so that could be a fun idea too, is to play with some patterning. Um, if you've got notebook paper at home, that is a great substitute as well. Um, sometimes there's cardboard. This can be really fun if you want to make 3D objects and then paint them or draw on them or even just having something a little bit stiffer. Um, if you're gonna be using paint or if you're gonna be using um, a marker, could be used. Something to think about is using something a little stiffer. Um, you can use paper bags, um, so I'm not going to try to open this one one-handed, but this one has a little bit of a wax coating inside, um, but I could use the outside, just opening this bag up. Um, for these projects, I'm not looking for anything that's like necessarily a blank canvas. Like, you can. You can use sketchbook paper, you can use regular canvas, you can use plain paper bags um, or paper, but it doesn't have to be, so if you don't have it, I'm not going to be like, oh, you don't have good paper. Um, you can use tissue paper, and uh, if you had cardboard and you wanted to lay down like tissue paper on top of it and glue it down, that would be something you could do to create a really cool texture. Magazines, things like that, that already have color, already have texture. You could make a collage. There's all kinds of ideas. Next on the list is gonna be what to do if you don't have glue. Um, so right now I've just got some regular flour. Um, I know that that's kind of a hot commodity right now, but um, you don't have to use a ton. And then we're gonna add a little bit of salt. Let's see if I can do this. So not a ton, just a, oh, I'm getting salt everywhere now. A little bit there. And then we're gonna add water until it's about applesauce consistency. Um, so you can use a brush, you can use a spoon to mix this up, whatever. I would add little bits of water at a time though, because this is going to get soupy pretty quick. Um, so this is what they use for paper mache. Um, it's a whole other art form, but in the early days of collage, they would actually use this flour paste. Um, in printmaking in Japan, they would use a flour paste to attach... Um, different colors of tissue to paper before they printed on it, and it was um, paper collet. Um, very cool technique. Um, and then you can just take a little bit on your finger or a brush if you have it, and we're going to attach our paper. Um, so you can use, again, plain paper, you can use tissue paper. Uh, this does dry clear, as long as you don't have like a ton on there. Um, if it's too thick, you can add a little bit of water, smooth it out. Um, but this is a really cool way to get some different consistency or different textures to your work before you start painting on them. Or if you don't have anything at home, you could do a collage and that would work just fine. So now, as you can tell, it is stuck on there. <laughs> That's funny. Um, when it's dry, it will be stuck on there. Um, right now there's going to be some gloopy things if I were to let it dry as is. So I might go over and try to take off some of that flour paste that's a little too much. Um, letting that dry and then it's going to be a nice purple part of my paper. Um, so glue, if you don't have glue. Okay, so you don't have drawing pencils at home. That's okay. Go raid the junk drawer. Um, there's probably all kinds of different colors of pens, pencils, markers. Um, you don't need fancy pencils and pens to make good art. Uh, it's a misconception. 
that we're going to try to fix by being creative. All right, so here's another one. Say you want to add color and you don't have colored pens. What are some things that you could do to paint with? So I'm going to be attaching a PDF that has a lot of this, um, well, that has all of this written out. Um, but something that you can think about is if you have a friend or family or yourself that has maybe some eyeshadow, this is a great option to paint with. Grab a brush here. Um, comes in all kinds of colors. You can even use makeup brushes to paint with it. Um, all you need to do is just add a teeny bit of water and you have a nice paint. Um, this isn't going to be as thick as acrylic paint. This will be more like a watercolor, um, but you can get some cool sparkles. You can get some cool effects with just a little bit of eyeshadow. Works for eyeliner, blush, uh, foundation. Makeup in general is pigmented, so we can use it. Um, also, we can use cooking supplies. So, say we have some spices. Um, there's a ton of different colors we can get. Every color of the rainbow, if you so choose. What we're gonna be making is um, basically teas or tinctures um, or mashed bits of things. Um, for the spices, we're gonna be mixing this with water and then with some cornstarch or flour, and that's gonna give us a nice paint consistency. We can even use that same paste that we used in the paper mache. Um, so we're gonna make a couple different colors here. It's like a cooking show, but different. Um, so I've got some paprika here. That's gonna give us an orange. Um, turmeric is a cool spice. It's beautiful, um, but we're gonna make a yellow. And then our green, ooh, wow. Our green is gonna be from a mint, because I have not gone out to the garden to pick some grass yet. Um, so these are all gonna be very earthy colors, obviously, because they come from the earth, um, but that's totally fine. I think that there's a lot of beauty in that. And then I also made a coffee one earlier. Um, so I took some brewed coffee and I mixed it with water and then I added a little bit of cornstarch to it. Um, for these ones, we're gonna add some of our, oops, I accidentally spilled coffee in our paste. Oh, wow. Um, we're gonna use some of that paper mache paste you want to keep it as dry as possible so that way if you're adding water it doesn't turn into just a soupy mess um and then for our hmm, for the leaves this might not work as well just because they're still chunky um so if i was going to do a paint with these i would either soak them into a tea and then use that tea water um, either that or you could like grind them up really, really fine with like um, a mortar and pestle or the end of a paintbrush if you have that. And that's going to give you a fine enough powder where if you paint with it, it's not going to be super distracting with giant leaf chunks. Um, but you could. Like if you want to have quite a bit of texture in your piece, why not? Um, this smells amazing. It smells minty right now. Okay, so that would be how you could grind it down if you wanted to. Otherwise, we're just going to mix in our water paste to our ah, spices. That's gonna give us, oh dear. There we go, needed more water. Um, so that, that uh, paper mache paste really soaks up the water, so we don't need a lot of it. Um, and we have a pink now. Okay, let's... We're going to get kind of an orangey red color here by adding those together. Everything smells like mint right now. Um, so if I was doing this for real, I would probably wash my stuff in between um, and I wouldn't add paint until you're like ready to roll just because with this paper mache stuff, it does dry fairly quickly. Um, so you want to make sure that you're ready. Um, also, if you don't like the fact that there's a lot of little like sandy bits in here, you can strain it. So make that tea to where you're just soaking it and then you're straining it through like a little tiny strainer or a big strainer or something. 
and then using that water and adding the flour to that. Um, but for right now, this would work just fine for me. I kind of like having some texture in my paint. Um, and it mixes just like normal paint. Um, and this would dry hard, so you could have your piece and it would stand the test of time. Um, some of this brown maybe. That one's a little bit, I didn't add, I added cornstarch to that one. I'm not loving that as much. Um, but it still does the job. You could use coffee as like just by itself. It's pigmented really, really strongly if you brew it strong. Um, and then maybe we add some little green to our apple or peach or whatever this is. Um, and you have paint. Uh, so this is, if we're in a bind, uh, this is really quickly made stuff, but you can make really nice uh, paint as well um, with just a few supplies at home. And I will post um, the sheet that has how to get more colors. All right, say so you don't have a paintbrush. That's okay too. Um, oops, that's the dirty end of a Q-tip that I used in the coffee. Um, so you can use a Q-tip and it works just fine. Um, cotton balls work just as well um, to give you a paintbrush if you don't have one on hand. Also, you can use a makeup sponge if you've got one or if somebody in your house has one. Um, again, ask before you grab things. You don't want to start a war in a quarantine here. Um, but maybe we use a makeup sponge to get us some nice background. You can do bigger areas with a sponge. I really love the color of turmeric. I think it's beautiful. Um, and so that's a really nice way to paint if you don't have a paintbrush. Also, guess what? You can use your fingers. Um, finger painting is not off the table, people. Um, it's a really, I don't know. It's, it's fun to play with paint. I would say if you're using like a spice, like this paprika, don't touch your face afterwards because it's a spice and it'll burn your face. Um, so just be aware if you're using food products. Um, but you can use your fingers, you can use your hands. Um, this, is, this is supposed to be fun and relaxing and I don't want this to stress you out even more by not having supplies. Um, and that's why we're doing this video. So have fun with this. Um, and then, yeah, just try to, try to make something. If you're not sure what to do, just give me uh, some kind of a message on chat or you can email me. Um, you could voice call or mess, uh, video call, whatever you feel most, most comfortable with. We will figure something out. This is not meant to add more stress to your day. Life is crazy and stressful enough right now. Um, this is meant to be an outlet and I hope it's a fun outlet. I'm really looking forward to seeing what you guys create. Um, I've been creating at home and it's been helping with my stress levels and just crazy feelings because everything is different right now. Um, I hope you guys are all doing well. Um, hopefully not bored out of your brains yet. Um, I miss you guys and hopefully we'll see you soonish. Have fun. Jake, are you not impressed? Pete, what are you doing? Ah! Is you sad? Are you sad, kitty? Who's that kitty, huh?